Photobleaching is a very handy tool with a lot of cool applications. For example, it allows you to estimate the motility of your fluorophore in your sample. Here I would like to photobleach YFP inside the nucleus and then see how fast does the steel fluorescent protein from the cytoplasm diffuse into nucleus. In my experiment I would like to see what happens in the whole nucleus. So I can measure what is the diameter of the nuclei in my sample. And this one is 7 micrometer, this is about 11, this is about 10. So I have approximately 10, 12 micrometer nuclei. And if I go to channels and take a look at the settings for my pinhole, I can see that the thickness of my optical section is 0 0.9 micrometers which means that currently I'm seeing only a very thin slice of the nucleus and I have no idea what is going on above and below it. The smart thing to do would be to set the size of the section according to the size of the structure you would like to visualize. And I will pull up the pinhole size until I reach, let's stop at 12. I'm going to detect changes in the intensities in my sample and I of course need to make sure that there are no oversaturated pixels on my image. For this I can go to range indicator function. The pixels not visible to the detector will be colored with blue color. Pixels of quantifiable intensities will be coded in grayscale and oversaturated pixels will be indicated with the red color. And as you can see I have quite a lot of red pixels here already and I even opened the pinhole additionally. So this needs to be adjusted. Um, I need to decrease the master gain and the laser intensity to get rid of the red pixels. Okay. I'm going to look at the motility of my fluorophore in the sample and the faster I can perform scanning the better will be my time resolution. In acquisition mode I can see that now it takes four and a half minutes to scan one single frame. This is way too long. It will decrease my time resolution and will, it will additionally photo bleach the whole sample which I don't want to happen. Um, so I will decrease the averaging to the minimum, decrease the resolution to the minimum and also speed up the scanning. And as you can see now I have only 400 milliseconds per frame. And I can check the quality of the image and it looks still recognizable. And now I can continue with the bleaching experiment. First I need to activate the bleaching by clicking here and you can see that two other options become automatically active and I will pull them out here regions, bleaching and time series. The regions menu allows me to to select regions I would like to photo bleach and the regions I would like to analyze. So for example I would like to photo bleach this whole nucleus and analyze the change of intensity in it. And for this nucleus I would like to photo bleach only half of it and analyze the loss of intensity of it, but I also would like to analyze the change of intensity in the other half of the nucleus while I do not photo bleach it. This will tell me whether fluorescent protein from this half was diffusing into unbleached region and whether protein from the unbleached region was diffusing into the photo bleached area. For the third nucleus, I would like to perform no photo bleaching and just analyze it. This will be my control for photo bleaching caused by scanning per se. I will maybe refocus a bit. Yes. In the bleaching menu the software will ask you first about how many scans would you like to perform before you start the photo bleaching. And usually I use three or five uh, frames depending on how sensitive my fluorophore is to scanning. You can repeat photo bleaching after several scans, um, but now I will run only one time photo bleaching. Then the software will ask you about how many iterations would you like to run. It basically asks you how many times does the laser have to go through the area you selected to cause the photo bleaching. 
And the number of iterations you can estimate only empirically. It will depend on the amount of the fluorophore present uh, in your sample and how stable it is. I will ask for 100 times. And then you also can influence the efficacy of photobleaching if you slow down the speed of scanning in the selected area. Basically, the laser will spend more time on the photobleached area and thus photobleach it better. So I will decrease the speed a bit. Again, you need to estimate these parameters empirically for your sample. Please check in this box to preserve our supersensitive detector from being damaged. And you can see here that I can select laser line which I would like to use for photo bleaching. And in this case, I'm scanning YFP, so I would like to use 540 nanometer laser. And I will use 100% intensity of the laser which means that 100% intensity, 514 nanometer laser, will go 100 times through this selected area with the scanning speed 4 and do the same for this selected area. Alternatively, you can click here and use different laser lines for different selected areas. This would be useful if I had more than one fluorophore in my sample. In the time series, you can set how many scans would you like to perform after photo bleaching. Again, this you need to estimate empirically. It will depend on how fast does your protein move. Sometimes you will need to scan for several minutes, sometimes for maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes. I will set currently on 19 scans with no time interval in between. So this will be continuous scanning. And after I set all these parameters, I can click on Start Experiment. And in the gallery, I will see the progress of scanning. So these were the five scans before photo bleaching, which I asked for here. And now photo bleaching happens, 540 nanometer laser of 100% intensity. Photo bleaches this area and this area selected here for bleaching by scanning it 100 times with a very slow speed. In the 2D tab, I can scroll through the time series of my photo bleaching and see the efficacy of photo bleaching. So you can see that in the area number one, I lost quite a lot of signal. And I also lost quite a lot of signal in the area number two and three, while number four remained as bright as it was. And if I go to the tab me and Roy, I can get statistics for each of the selected regions. As you can see here, in this area I lost maybe 50% of the signal, so it went from intensity around 30-31 to intensity around 15. And with time the yellow fluorescent protein from the cytoplasm slowly creeps back into the nucleus. So you can see that after 232 seconds, the intensity recover up to 18. While in the non-photobleached region, I had intensity around 70 something. And during the scanning, it dropped down a little bit, but not significant. In this nucleus, I photobleached only the region within green rectangle. You can see that it went from values around 50 to values around 28. And the neighbor region, which was not photo bleached, also lost quite a lot of intensity and went from values around 62, 61 to values around 40 something. This indicates that the protein contained within the nucleus is actually not anchored but diffuses freely into the. Uh, region within the blue rectangle. And because of the free diffusion, the whole pool of the uh, protein contained in the nucleus is photo bleached. You can export this data uh, into Excel by right clicking on 
the table and click on copy table.